we've seen just overnight that Israel has cancelled its plans for senior officials to visit Washington. This after the United States abstained on the UN Security Council vote that called for a ceasefire in Gaza. Look, this is clearly tensions escalating between Netanyahu and Biden, but to me, it seems like the United States is walking away from Israel when it claimed that it was going to support its stated aim of eradicating Hamas. It, it, Biden's America is stabbing Israel in the back. I'm really shocked by their abstention on this uh, motion at the United Nations, which doesn't make a ceasefire conditional on the release of the hostages. Let's not forget that there are still many Israeli hostages in Hamas and Islamic Jihad captivity, including American citizens. I think there are six American citizens. And Biden's America seems not to take that very seriously. Uh, they're sending a really powerful message to Hamas. What the White House is essentially saying to Hamas is you can carry on terrorizing. You can carry on holding these hostages, which is a crime against humanity, because we are going to put pressure on Israel to stop bombing you, to stop bombing Hamas. So this doesn't only weaken the relationship between the White House and Israel at a really important moment, which I think is an act of betrayal, mm. but it also emboldens Hamas. It sends them a really important signal that even now, the, the most powerful country in the world, the most influential country in the Middle East, is going to put pressure on Israel to uh, down weapons and let Hamas essentially carry on holding these hostages. I, I think what Biden is doing it is he is sacrificing Israel because he's worried about certain Democratic voters turning against him. These are mostly upper middle class graduates, the elected sections of the Democratic Party who have a real burning hatred of Israel. He's sacrificing Israel to win the votes of that section of society. I think it is such a political mistake. It's a moral mistake. And I think it's a really shameful thing that America is doing. Mm -hmm. It is devastating. Um, just before you go, we're hearing that far-right commentator Candace Owens has quit The Daily Wire. Uh, it's a conservative uh, news website. Reportedly over anti-Semitic comments that she has made, that she's part of this kind of... Um, isolationist movement in the Republican Party that's been arguing against the US involvement in Israel, uh, or in support of Israel, also Ukraine as well. Uh, what's happened here? I think sections of the right are going a bit mad. I must say, you know, the kind of very online right, the right as represented by people like Candice Owens and some of her followers, you know, we know that the left has gone completely insane since the 7th of October. Well, more insane, more insane than they already were. They've been on the streets holding what are essentially pro-Hamas marches. They've been mm. damning Israel, the most evil state in the world. They've been flirting with ideas of barbarism and turning their back on civilization. We know that that's what the woke left has done. But I think sections of the online right are starting to do something very similar. And Candice Owens really sums this up. She has she started off by attacking Israel, but it morphed very quickly into attacks on Jewish people. She's now saying that the Jews run Washington, D.C., and they are doing horrific things. And these gangs of people are, uh, have a stranglehold over public life. These are old anti-Semitic ideas, I'm afraid to say. And it re she really does demonstrate that anti-Zionism is a gateway drug to anti-Semitism. And very quickly, hatred for Israel can become hatred for the Jewish people. And I think it's very worrying that we're seeing that across the political spectrum at the moment. Yeah, and at times... Uh, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism are indistinguishable. Brendan O'Neill, thank you so much for your clear thinking and your writing. We love your work here in Australia. Thank you for joining us.